How's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to dive into a topic that is pretty paramount to any virtual deployment that we might be diving into in the future. And it's pretty much a underlying necessity. Let's be real. We necessity for any environment, at least that I've ever worked in, and I've seen quite a few. And that's a V motion. If you've never heard of V motion before, let me go ahead and kind of give you the the hundred thousand foot view as to what V motion does and why it's necessary. So let's go ahead and take a look at what V motion is first, and then we'll go ahead and talk about how we implement it in our environment. So let's say, for example, we have host one and we have host two, right? Definitely not an artist by by trade. And let's say we have some networking that sits in between these guys, and we'll call this just, you know, net one. What it doesn't need to be anything specific. Well, if I have VM one here, right? And I have a v nothing over here. In the event that something happens in the network and, you know, we need to, you know, host one has some sort of problem or we need to do maintenance on it or whatever the case might be. In other words, this VM right here needs to move over to here. How would you do that? Well, like, well, you showed us how to do that. If we were running shared storage, we can take the VM, we can power it down, then we can unregister it from the current host, go over to the other host that we wanted it to run on, and then register it to that new host. Yes, that is one way of doing it. You also showed us in a previous video that we could also export a VM from an ESXi host and import it into another ESXi host. Yes, you can do that as well. Those are both very, very resource intensive and time consuming operations. What happens if you wanted to move a VM from one host to another, but you didn't want it to power it down, you didn't want it to unregister it, and you didn't want to have to export it? What are your other options? Well, your other option, ladies and gentlemen, is vMotion. So I'm going to put this up here, vMotion. Now, this is not specific to VMware. There's other platforms that are out there, like Microsoft has their own version of that called Live Migrate inside of Hyper-V. Now, when it comes to a vMotion, what are you doing exactly? There's two different types of vMotion, okay? The first one is gonna be your compute. I'm gonna put in comp for short, which is gonna be CPU and RAM is gonna be the one that you're gonna be moving. You're gonna be using your compute resources. You're gonna be transferring those resources from here to here. Okay, that's the first one is compute. You also have storage. I'm gonna put in store for short, where you're gonna be moving the, the VMDK the virtual machine disk. So you can copy the hard drive from one storage appliance or one storage type to another. So let's say for example, your storage on this host for this VM sits on local storage, right? Not a very good idea to do, but maybe you've got a couple of terabytes of storage and you just install it locally. Okay, no harm, no foul, right? Well, what happens if you wanna move that storage from local to say shared? Let's say, for example, you have another network set up here, and this is going to be for iSCSI, right? You got a shared storage solution. Could you do that? 100%. We already did that. We moved. It was, took a long time to do it, but we moved our storage for VM1-Linux from local storage to shared storage, right? Well, we did that, and then what we were able to do is once we moved it to shared storage, we were able to go over here to host two. We were able, well, on host one, we unregistered the VM, and then we re-registered over here. Can I do both storage vMotion and compute at the same time? You can. This is what they would commonly refer to as a full vMotion, where you're moving the storage and the, the CPU RAM at the same time. Obviously, this will take for happen first because it's less resource intensive to do, and then you'll move the VMDK file from one storage type to the other. Now, typically speaking, if your storage is already for a VM is already sitting on shared storage, do you need to move the virtual machine disk file from one storage type to the other? The answer to that question is no. If you're already on shared storage and you're on the right storage tier, and we'll talk about that more when we get into storage-based policy management with different tiers of storage. If it's already on the right storage type, and we don't really care at this point what that storage is, whether it's flash, high-speed SATA, low-speed SATA, so on and so forth. 
as long as it's on the right storage, you can vMotion a VM back and forth a billion times between ESXi hosts. When we get into clusters in an upcoming set of videos, there's going to be a couple terms that we're going to learn about. The first one is going to be Distributed Resource Schedule, or DRS. We're going to learn about HA, where if an ESXi host dies, for example, and any VMs that are running on that ESXi host need to be, are going to get powered off abruptly and immediately when the host itself dies, whether it's power or otherwise, those VMs will then be evacuated or restarted over on this other host. And then you'll use vMotion to move them over. There's fault tolerance, which allows a VM here. So we'll just draw this one inside of a box and we'll say one over here inside of a box where you'll be able to provide replication. And you can put a, just, you can put DRS and fault tolerance and HA all inside of a cluster and allow to allow a VM to be highly protected from failover or from failure. So the bottom line is vMotion in its most basic sense is allowing a VM from to be moved from one host to another while staying powered on. That's the, the big win that we want to go ahead and deploy. You can go in, if you have a single VM kernel adapter and you want to just check all the check boxes for all of its capabilities. And let's say that's management, you want vSAN, which we haven't talked about yet, vMotion, you want to do NFS, or uh, you can do fault tolerance, logging, you want to do uh, replication, so on and so forth, right? The, the list goes on, right? So if you want to check all these boxes on a VM kernel adapter, you can. And then that one VM kernel adapter can be doing all of these different capabilities as they go along. Well, I don't really recommend that if you have the ability of segregating the different types of traffic. So in VMware Workstation, we have additional networks set up to where we can do that. Where over here, let's say I have this as vMotion, right? So I can move a VM between ESXi hosts over the vMotion network. So basically the vMotion network is just used to replicate information to make sure that the ESXi hosts are in sync over that network and it's just smarter, in my opinion, to separate traffic wherever you can. So we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to go create a new VM kernel adapter. So we're going to create a VM kernel adapter. We're going to go create a, I'll, I'll put an int for, for short. We're going to create a new vSwitch for this. And then we're going, and once we have those in play, we're going to give each one of the ESXi hosts its own IP address. And then once that's done, and we have that in play. Then we're going to be able to move a VM right here over to here and with it staying on, uh, staying live, staying uh, powered on and operational. And that's really the big win here with vMotion. We're going to take a look at how that comes into play and the details behind it. So let's go ahead, which we've already taken, pretty much taken a look at. Let's go ahead and clear the screen. I'm going to go ahead and pull up Firefox. I'm going to come back over here to the host. I'm going to start on host one. Because we're going to have to do this to all three hosts, right? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to VM Kernel Adapter. And the cool thing about this is it gives me the, the, the ability to do this right away. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up our topology. We have vMotions VMNet 3, 10, 1, 4 is going to be our subnet. So I'm going to go ahead and say Add Networking. I'm going to say it's going to be a VM Kernel Adapter. Click Next. Target Device, we're going to say New vSwitch. This is going to be on one host, right? One host only. We're going to, we're going to have to redo this two additional times. I'm going to go ahead and choose the standard switch. We're going to go ahead and select an adapter. So we have three, four, uh, three, five, and six. So three is going to be for our storage. Five and six are going to, five is going to be vMotion, six is going to be fault tolerance. I'm going to choose five. Click on OK. I'm going to click Next. Poor properties. I'm going to call this guy vMotion. And I'm going to check the vMotion checkbox. This is really, really important that you check the checkbox for vMotion. Click Next for the IP address settings. We're going to say static, and this is going to be 10.1.4.11, and then slash 24. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click on Next, and Finish. So that will allow us to tie all that together. And then we're going to have vMotion. If you look right here, vMotion is says it's enabled. 
So we're good to go there. I'm going to do the same thing on host two and three. I'm going to go ahead and pause while I do that, and then we're going to be able to go from there. All right, so host two and host three are both configured appropriately. But one thing I noticed when I was going through and configuring them is if we click on host one and we go to virtual switches, we have the data v switch, right? If we click on host two, we have the data v switch. And if we click on host three, we do not have a data suite v switch. Even though the, the, there is v switch one and v switch two, we need to add an additional v switch. And this is going to be for allowing the VM, any VMs that are currently on the data network that are on another host to be moved over to ESXi host 3. If it doesn't have a data V switch, then we're going to have run into a network connectivity problem. So I'm going to go ahead and add networking. I'm going to say a virtual machine port group for a standard switch. Click next. The We're going to choose an existing standard switch and we're going to I'm sorry, a new standard switch, so we need to create one. It's going to be data. Click Next. The active adapter for this guy will be VMNIC4. And click on OK. And then click Next. The This guy right here will be data. Click Next. And there we go. So now we have that in play. We'll be able to... Then we want to do a V motion. We will. Which, guess what? We're going to go ahead and expand all of these guys appropriately and so now if I want to move a VM from one host to another I need to, I can do that now if I want to move VM 1-Linux I want to right click here and click on migrate I can say I want to do compute and uh, compute resources only I can change resource storage only or I can do both I'm going to change the compute resources only it's going to ask what where the uh, what host do you have? I'm going to go ahead and say that we're going to go ahead and we want to move it to host three. It's currently sitting on host two. It did a compatibility check. It says yep, that'll work. Click next, and it's going to say okay, where do you want to move the data? And so it says that. So down here at the bottom, we have this network interface, network adapter one cannot use data network. The destination network on the destination host is configured for different offload and security policies in the source network. So I am a little perplexed as to why it says that. So let's go ahead and just cancel this at the moment. I am going to go and look at the, the networking tab here. And we're going to look at the data network. And permissions. Look at the hosts. So in this case here, it's a little difficult to determine why we're having a problem. So sometimes you have to actually go back to the host itself. So I'm going to go to host 2. I'm going to log in as root. I'm going to go to host 3, log in as root. Uh, let's give me a refresher browser. Yep, advanced. Same thing with this guy, and see exactly why we're getting a why we're having a problem with that. So I'll put. Oh, there we go. Let's go ahead and log in as root, and the password for root. Same thing with this guy. Sometimes I find that hovering. We'll go ahead and log in and see exactly what issue we're seeing specifically with this configuration. Sometimes the information that's pushed from vCenter server down to the ESXi host doesn't make it easy to understand why we're having a problem. And in this particular host, I had not actually logged into him yet. I'm going to click no for that guy. And then on this guy here, same thing. Well, we should be good to go here. So I'm going to click on the networking tab here. And I'm going to look at why vSwitch1 is, there's a data vSwitch. The port group is specifically what we're looking at, data. And all that looks good. BMNIC4, BM1, 
Linux, okay. We have the same thing over here, networking tab. And we have data. Now the virtual switches are gonna be named a little bit differently because they were configured by um, vCenter. So we come back over here, we click on networking and we look at the v virtual switches. We can rename them if we want to. So I'm gonna rename this guy here, switch two, we should be able to edit settings. And we can rename this guy well, maybe it won't let me do it. We'll go ahead and click on cancel on that one. But as we can see that they're all associated the way that they need to be. I don't know if I can change the actions this way. No, well, let me do that. So on the port groups, if we click on data. Okay, so here's here's the problem. If we look over here on this guy and we look at data vSwitch and we look at the the port group config. We look at this, not the, I want to look at the port group specifically. So right here, if we look at this guy, it says promiscuous mode, force transmits, MAC address changes, no's across the board, right? If we look at host three, it's yeses. So I'm going to go ahead and edit the settings here. And I'm going to expand each one of these. And I'm going to say reject to all of them and click on save, just so that they match across the board. So we got nose here and nose here. So I'm gonna go back to our host, or our vCenter server. I'm gonna right click on this guy. I'm gonna go through the migrate process one more time and click on next. We're gonna choose to go to vert host three, click next. And there we go, so the network checked out the motion priority and normal priority. We're going to go ahead and click on next and finish. So now we should be able to move the VM from one host to the other and the vert relocate the virtual machine process is happening right down here. 53%. This is a good sign. And so we should look down here and if we see virtual machines. We should be able to see VM one dash Linux show up and we should be just nearly done with it. This process will take a couple of minutes to do. It's There are cleaner ways of doing this through DRS and lo configuring automatic load balancing, but this gives us an indication that things are working. If we click back over here and we go to virtual machines, we can see now that there are no virtual machines. This guy is now powered on and we've moved it over. If we click on him, we should see that we are in the data port group which we are. Excellent. So now we've been able to successfully vMotion a VM from one host to the other. We did a little bit of troubleshooting as well with the, the, the port group security settings and stuff like that. So as you can see, not terribly difficult, right? This is one of those main things that you really need to understand. And we did this with standard switches through vCenter server. We don't have anything other than added other than the basics that we already had working from managing the hosts directly. So vCenter server does give us a little bit more flexibility, but as you can see, if we were to look now, we can see that vert host three and then move from host two to host three. So everything worked when it came to doing the vMotion and all that good stuff that goes along with that. So beyond that, ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much it for this video. I wanna show you, thank you guys for hanging out with me in this video. And until next time guys, take it easy.